What's up, fellow humans? All right, so today is Resurrection Sunday, and I wanted to come and share a message that I am receiving from Spirit. Um, and just a little background, I've done a lot of studying of Eastern and Egyptian um, spiritual practices and energy therapies and how energy works and consciousness and how consciousness works during living and in preparation for death not necessarily knowing you know the full extent of the death process just understanding that we want to have our hearts light and not have regrets or attachments to this world upon death. And knowing that that makes death easier, uh, making it easier for us to transition to the next plane of existence and not get stuck in between worlds. And so Spirit guided me to read on this Resurrection Day the Tibetan book of living and dying and in the introduction well the beginning of the first chapter of the book he talks about two experiences that like were really profound to him at a very young age like six or seven years old of two llamas that had died that were very close to him and noticing the difference in their deaths based on their level of self-mastery and a meditative process in living. And he saw that one who was at, you know, a good practitioner of meditation, how they were able to um, handle the death process and the suffering and the pain that went along with it and just kind of like do meditative breathing practices and clarity and understanding of why the process was happening. And versus someone who was a master at living and noticing how they had less suffering and pain during the death and how their death was uh, very quick and they were almost able to guide themselves through the death process then he goes on to say when i first came to the west and this is after 1959 when chinese uh, occupation um, had overtaken tibet and uh, his master had died he says, and this is called, this section is called Death in the Modern World. When I first came to the West, I was shocked by the contrast between the attitudes to death I had been brought up with and those I now found. For all its technological achievements, modern Western society has no real understanding of death or what happens in death or after death. I learned that people today are taught to de deny death and that, and taught that it means nothing but annihilation and loss. That means most of the world lives either in denial of death or in terror of it. Even talking about death is considered morbid, and many people believe that simply mentioning death is to risk wishing it upon ourselves. Others look on death with a naive, with a naive thoughtless cheerfulness, thinking that some unknown reason death will work out all right for them, and that is, it is nothing to worry about. When I think of them, I am reminded of what one Tibetan master says, quote, people often make the mistake of being frivolous about death and think, oh, well, death happens to everybody. It's not a big deal. It's natural. I'll be fine. That's a nice theory until one is actually dying. Of these two attitudes towards death, one views death as something to scurry away from and the other as something that will just take care of itself. How far they both are from understanding death's true significance. All the greatest spiritual traditions of the world, including, of course, Christianity, have told us clearly that death is not the end. They have all handed down a vision of some sort of life to come, which infuses that life that we are leading now with sacred meaning. Let me repeat that. They have all handed down a vision of some sort of life to come, which infuses this life that we are leading now with sacred meaning. But despite their teachings, modern society is largely a spiritual desert where the majority imagine that this life is all that there is without any real or authentic faith, <clears throat> excuse me, faith in an afterlife. 
Most people live lives deprived of any ultimate meaning. I have come to realize that the disastrous effects, effects of the denial of death go far beyond the individual. They affect the whole planet. Believing fundamentally that this life is the only one, modern people have developed a no long-term vision. So there is nothing to restrain them from plundering the planet for their own immediate ends and from living in a selfish way that could prove fatal for the future. How many more warnings do we need? Like this one from the former Brazilian minister for the environment, responsible for the Amazon rainforest. Modern industrial society is a fanatical religion. We are demolishing, poisoning, destroying all life systems on the planet. We are signing IOUs for our children and they will not be able to pay. We are acting as if we are the last generation on the planet. Without a radical change in our heart, in our mind, in the vision of the earth, we will end up like Venus, charred and dead. Fear of death and ignorance of the afterlife are fueling that destruction of our environment that is threat threatening all of our lives. So it isn't all that the more disturbing that people are not taught what death is or how to die or given any hope in what lies after death. And so what really lies behind life? Could it be more ironic that young people are so highly educated in every subject except the one that holds the key to the entire meaning of life and perhaps to our very survival? That's the question, humanity. How are we living? It's gonna dictate how we die and the afterlife that we experience. It's based on our consciousness and our heart space and how seriously we take our spiritual practice because the person that wrote this book said after they saw those two deaths take place, they were like, I need to get real serious about my spiritual practice because I want to have a peaceful death. Trying to get to a part where it says, oh, I think this is in the introduction, the preface rather. But it says, in order to have a peaceful death, we must first learn how to have a peaceful life. Oh, here we go. <clears throat> Naturally, most of us would like to die a peaceful death. But it's also clear that we cannot hope to die peacefully if our lives have been full of violence or if our minds have been mostly if our minds have mostly been agitated by emotions like anger, attachment or fear. So if we wish to die well, we must learn how to live well. Hoping for a peaceful death, we must cultivate peace in our mind and in our way of life. Whew, I love y'all humanity. Let's level up. Happy Resurrection Day. Peace.